Next up, we're going to begin our study of hyperbolic functions. Um, so the hyperbolic functions are, are often passed over in a lot of calculus courses. Um, when you've got a compressed semester and only so much material that you can fit in, typically when something has to give, hyperbolic functions are one of the first things out the door. Which is a shame because they're actually incredibly useful. Um, they show up in a lot of physics and engineering applications, for example. Um, and if anyone who's ever studied special relativity, for example, has probably come across hyperbolic functions. And if you do go on to study functions of a complex variable, uh, then you're going to find that actually there are some really nice connections between the trigonometric functions on the one hand and hyperbolic functions on the other hand, beyond the ones that we're going to see here. Um, so so they, they are actually quite interesting functions to study, and they have a lot of useful properties. Um, one of the main things that we're going to be interested in them for here is they are going to help us solve certain integration problems that might otherwise be a little bit clumsy. Uh, in particular, um, they, are, they are a good method to try for certain trigonometric substitution um, integrals where you might have had to do a secant substitution. Often a hyperbolic substitution is more efficient. Okay? Um, now, the reason that these are called hyperbolic functions is the following. Okay? So first of all, let's remind ourselves that for, for trig functions, okay, so if we have the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1, right? And we choose some point on that unit circle, making an angle of theta with the positive x-axis. We know that the coordinates of that point are given by cos theta sine theta, which means that the two elementary trig functions, sine and cosine, they satisfy this all-important Pythagorean identity, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. Right. The hyperbolic functions, on the other hand, well, if you went to a school that doesn't cover conic sections in high school, increasingly conic sections don't find their way into the curriculum anymore. Um, but just as we have the unit circle here satisfying the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, um, we can also consider the unit hyperbola x squared minus y squared equals 1. Which looks something like this. So I'm going to mark off the point 1, 0, point minus 1, 0, and the unit hyperbola looks something like this. Okay. And hyperbolas have a lot of interesting geometric properties, um, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to just talk about the hyperbolic functions and where they come from. And so the idea is that a point on, on the hyperbola will have coordinates given by the hyperbolic functions. So this will be a point of the form. Um, now, um, we have to talk a little bit about pronunciation for these things. Um, a lot of people, especially physics and engineering people, um, pronounce these as um, sanch, kosh, and tanch. I struggle with those. I'm not a big fan of those pronunciations, but they are fairly common. Um, so I might just say hyperbolic cos and hyperbolic sine. You'll probably find me saying that instead of saying sanch and kosh or kosh. Um, but the coordinates of a point on the unit hyperbola are given by um, kosh t sanch t, right? Hyperbolic cos and hyperbolic sine. Um, so 
that's, that's where the name comes from. And, it, and if you want to actually see that really this works, that um, this is a point on that hyperbola, well then, of course, what this is suggesting is that it should be true that if I do hyperbolic cos squared minus hyperbolic sine squared, that should come out to equal 1. Um, and in fact, you can check this, and it's not so hard to check. Um, it's, it's a little bit of algebra and, and playing around with properties of exponentials. Okay, so we can put in the definitions, right? So you'll see that these are defined in terms of exponential functions. So we put in hyperbolic cos squared t. And actually, let's, let's actually, let's put it right in. Hang on a second. Let's skip a step, jump right in. So e to the t plus e to the minus t over 2, e to the t minus e to the minus t over 2. Okay, so if we square that, e to the t times e to the t, I get e to the 2t. The cross term, e to the t times e to the minus t, right, that's e to the t times 1 over e to the t, cancels out, you get two of them. So plus 2 plus e to the minus 2t, okay, over 4, subtract e to the 2t, minus 2 plus e to the minus 2t over 4. And of course, when you subtract these, well, those are going to cancel. Those are going to cancel. 2 minus minus 2 gives me 4 over 4. So indeed, I get 1. So it does satisfy this equation. Okay. All right, we'll pause here. Next up, um, we'll mention the graphs for these, and then we'll, we'll move on. We'll look at some of the other properties that we can deduce for hyperbolic functions, um, one of which is this identity that we see here.